All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, start recording here. So um, what I want you guys to do, so I've got my stuff here. I'm just going to set my painting off to the side for right now. Open up your um, palettes and your bag with all your stuff in it. Again, the first thing you should always do, guys, when you take out your brush, take that cap off and put that in your bag so that you don't lose that cap. Okay? That will roll away very easy. And just close up your bag. You can kind of put that off to the side or on the floor next to you just to get it out of the way. All right, so for your palette, now that we've kind of, we've already started this painting, um, I'm going to go ahead and get my paintbrush a little wet. So I haven't really messed around with these paints for a couple days. Um, a lot of times, actually the, my yellow is still wet, that's good. Um, a lot of times the top of your paint pile will actually get sort of like a dry skin on it with acrylics. And if you poke at it, you'll have new paint underneath all of that. So. Uh, but if you do find that you run out of paint or it's all dried up, you are more than welcome to go get some more paint over on the counter. Just again, you, you just need a little bit. You don't need a lot. So I'm actually going to get a little bit more green, this medium green for, uh, for me. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so I've got more of my green. So I'm going to go ahead and move my palette off the side now. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, get take off that lid just so that it um, doesn't get in my way right now. You guys are probably fine. So today what we're going to do, we are going to uh, get the rim painted in and we're going to deal with some details, okay? And then we're definitely going to get the shadows on our, on, on our painting. So one of the things that you may not have caught, uh, it was at the very end of the last video, is that I added some reflected highlights uh, onto my cup right here and right here on the bottom. It's actually kind of like, these are again reflected highlights that are kind of glaring onto the darker parts of my cup. And so basically I had this all painted really dark and then I went in and just took a thin layer of my medium green that I had made and just painted a little bit of that on top of there for those secondary highlights. So that's something that you may have missed. Um, but that's something that I, I need to also do actually over here at one point. And then I need to still make some areas darker still yet. So I still have quite a bit. But the first thing I want to do is I want to deal with the rim. So I'm going to go back, check on my piles here. I'm going to have to remix some of my colors. So go ahead and do that yourself. Yeah, I'm going to have to. So I'm going to go ahead and mix up. Oop, I need to get some more white. All right, so I actually had to load back up with some, quite a few of my paints. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of remix again these uh, three mixtures that I initially started off with at the beginning of the painting. Uh, a lot of that has dried up, so I just need to remix. Now again, remember what I've said about you know when you have to remix a color, I would not get too wrapped up into trying to get a perfect match uh, because it's virtually impossible to do that. So I wouldn't put that pressure on yourself to try to achieve that. Just get as close as you possibly can. It's all paint anyway, so it's all going to blend together one way or the other, and you'll, and you'll get it to work. So again, just get as close as you can. You know, and for me over here on this side of the room, I'm it's actually kind of dark over here. It's, it's even kind of hard to see what I'm doing. Okay. So you definitely want those three colors. back in. Remember to grab your paint from the edge of the pile 
And when you're mixing paint, uh, it's best to start off with your lightest color first and add your darkest to it. And of course I say that and I, I'm breaking the rules right now. I'm a rule breaker. Okay. Remember to darken up our colors. We're using our colors uh, complement. So I have a green cup. So because I have a green cup, the complement of green is red. So that's how we're going to darken our colors. We're not using black. And, and I don't like, I, I use black sort of at the end of uh, my projects, whether it be, you know, a dry media or even a wet media like paint, like what I'm doing right now. But um, I like to use it at the end. It's kind of like, it's my favorite part, actually. Uh, just getting that black added in and just watching things pop. But um, black, when mixed around with your colors, can often at times gray them out, so... I want to try to keep my colors as rich as possible. So, all right. So I've I've remixed my three base mixtures that I was working off with in the, initially. And so again, I'm going to just to start off this um, rim. I'm going to look at my, you know, look at my cup and, you know, ask myself where do I see the light hitting, uh, so on and so forth. So, you know, why do I see an edge that I see? Now, one of the things that I do notice over here where um, I do see that I see the light hitting the edge right here and I see the light hitting the edge over here is that that's also where, you know, on the I have other areas that have that same value. So, again, I've got to ask myself, why do I see that? And, again, it's not because you have an outline there or anything like that necessarily. It's, there's contrasting values. I'm also, too, going to look at the shapes that I see that those values make. And because I'm kind of painting in this tight area, I don't like to have a lot of paint on my brush. So if I'm painting in a very tight area, I'm going to have just a very little uh, paint on my brush. And that way I can have a little bit more control over it. Again, the first time you do something, it's just it's going to be a little bit of a hot mess. That's normal, but and again, if my paint's feeling a little kind of sticky or clumpy, I'm going to just get my brush a little wet to kind of deal with that. This is a really kind of thick, heavy-bodied acrylic paint, so. Again, I'm just looking at what the shapes, what shapes these values are making and where they're at. Asking myself, why do I see that? How is this different than what's around it? These are all questions I'm, that are kind of going through my head as I'm working on this, and this is how I'm coming up with my answers. And then I test those answers out, you know. It's like doing a science experiment. You have a guess at what's going to happen, but you're not going to know if you're right or not until you try it. And that's really what I'm doing. I'm just taking a guess here.
So I'm very, again, because I'm dealing with this small area, I don't have a lot of paint on my brush. So I, I am finding myself, I have to go back to my palette often. Again, also to, you know, pick up your palette or your uh, canvas and I turn it around often just so I can get a good angle with my brush. Should not be working on it flat. Some of my light on there. I'm going to move on to adding some of the medium where I think it needs to go. And just looking at the shapes. It's all about shapes. Just want to make sure I've said that. So after I get sort of my medium value established on this rim, then I'm going to then go in with um, my dark. And I will no doubt, you know, have to go in, I, and I probably, I still haven't added my lightest value at all over the whole painting, which will be coming today. And I haven't used my darkest yet. Slowly getting this area filled in. So I've got my medium on there, now I'm going to go in with my dark. And that will hopefully give me a good place with the rim. It won't be done, but um, it'll be a start.
So with the Stark, I'm, I'm still even kind of working on the inside of the cup too because that's helping me just to get that rim established. So that's my start on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually go in um, and uh, make even a lighter value here to work with. Um, and for me, since I have a green cup, I want to make a really, really light yellow. Um, and the reason why I'm going to make a light yellow for this is because green being a secondary color, you know, the two colors that make green are yellow and blue, and the lightest out of that combination or that formula is the yellow. So that's why I'm going to use sort of like a light yellow as a my lightest value. Now, for those of you that have like a blue cup, maybe you're just going to use, um, I mean, to be honest with you, I probably, for most of you guys, I would use light yellow as probably your lightest color just because the lights in this room are very yellow. So the coloring in here is that way, just because of the lights. So if you don't have yellow yet, you may need to go grab it. And I'm going to make a very, very pale light yellow. It's really hard to see on the screen. There it is, kind of. I'm going to make a very, very light yellow, almost white, and I'm going to use this as my lightest value. And I'm going to put this where I see these brightest, the brightest highlights. And I just want a little bit of paint on my brush. It's not going to be everywhere. couple spots. Well, it's just literally a, a dot. It's nothing that even gets blended out. Just figure out where those are. on that rim. Have a little bit even inside here. And that's all that they are. They're kind of like just little dots. Have them also too happening on the handle in some spots. Again, a light yellow, almost white. Just to kind of add a little pop. where I need it. Okay. So I've got 
got some of those bright and shinies on there. And then I'm going to make uh, another value. I want to, uh, I need something really dark. So I'm going to start off with a lot. I have dark green, so use your darkest color that you have and then mix your complement with it. I want to make something really, really dark. So darkest color I have is this dark green. I'm going to mix a little bit of red with it just to make it a bit darker. Hopefully. And I'm going to find those spots that need to be just a little bit darker to, again, just kind of punch out the form. And just trying to look at the shapes that these values are making. So it's just all about details now, just getting picky about stuff. Looking for those areas that maybe look a little flat and need more variation to look more form-like. It's all about contrast. It's all about values, what shapes those values make. So I'm going to give you guys a few minutes to work on just the detail in your cup. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is our cast shadows. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get started on the cast shadows and kind of um, talk my way through this. So your cast shadows are sitting on top of, obviously, a piece of uh, construction paper at your table. Okay. 
So that piece of construction paper has a color to it. So a lot of times, a lot of people have questions to me about how do you paint cash shadows, or how do you draw them, or whatever, especially when dealing with color. So a cash shadow is sort of like an, a, a math formula, okay, or a math problem. So if the color of your uh, object that the cash shadow is on is red, like in my case, okay, and the object that is creating the cash shadow is green, Basically, your cash shadow is going to be a combination of those two colors. So again, your cash shadow is going to be a combination of the color of the object that the cash shadow is coming from and the color of the object it is being casted on top of. Um, a lot of times people who haven't really taken any art classes or had any sort of formal training, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just go in and they'll just paint it black. But, you know, there, none of the objects that they're dealing with actually have black as their color. So what I did was I went ahead and mixed up some more of my medium color green and also my dark. I will be using those eventually. But what I'm also going to be doing, um, I'm going to make up, again, my, my construction paper is red. I'm going to make up a dark red now because I need it to look like it's on a piece of red construction paper. So whatever color your construction paper is, Take that color, and you want to darken it by mixing it with this complement, which actually should reflect the color of your cup. So if you have a blue cup sitting on an orange piece of construction paper, take the orange and add a little bit of the blue to it to darken it. If you have a yellow cup on the violet um, construction paper, start with the violet color and then add a little bit of the yellow to it to, again, kind of darken and dull it, okay? So what I'm going to do, I took, again, my base color of my construction paper is red, so I took some of the red, okay, and I'm going to mix a little bit of my green that I've been using to that red to darken it. And I'm just going to use this as sort of like a base. It's not super dark. But I would say it's kind of like a medium, medium dark, probably value of red. And I'm making a pretty good batch of this. So I'm going to go ahead, and again, it's, I can make this darker and I can make it lighter, which I will eventually. But I'm going to start with that first. I'm going to paint this down. And again, I have pretty large cast shadows, so I needed to mix up quite a lot of sort of this red, and then I did mix up some more of my medium green and my dark green, because I'll, I'll be using those eventually. Probably, I think. Again, I'm not really sure, but I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to kind of give this a base. Again, when I get close to that cup, I want to take my time. I don't want to overpaint the area. Take your time when you um, are around that cup. And again, if my paint feels a little sticky or a little heavy, I'm going to just get my brush a little wet. Now, um, when dealing with acrylics, <laughs> There's probably there's going to be a lot of painters out there who are going to be flipping out when they if they ever see this video, but um, it's not ideally recommended that you mix a lot of water with your acrylic paint. Um, there are uh, other substances that you can use, like they're called mediums, and uh, those are ideally what you want to do and use to. Um, sort of change the characteristic of your paints. 
Uh, it keeps the integrity of the paint still intact, whereas water, basically what water does to acrylic paint is it breaks it down. So um, that is for another time to learn about. This is just kind of like a quick little exercise at acrylic painting. So I've just got a base here. Again, I created like a medium red to just start off as a base. And then I'm going to do the same thing for this. I have two cache so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for this one. And then I'll go in and start working on um, just giving it some more uh, variation uh, because I am going to need to make it lighter and darker in spots. So again, I created this uh, dark color by again taking the color of my construction paper, which my construction paper color is red. So I took red and I mixed just a small amount of my complement to it, which is green, and also the color of my cup. I just mixed a small amount of the green to it to darken up the red and create like what I would consider sort of like a uh, medium sort of neutral red. And I'm just painting that as my base first for my cast shadow. And then after I get this base painted on, then I'm going to work on creating some more variation on it. Just need to get something down first to work with. I didn't want to necessarily start off with a dark, um, a dark red or my darkest value that I'm going to put on my cast shadow just because it can be really hard to cover up a dark color with acrylic paint sometimes. And I didn't want to start with my light because kind of the same, not necessarily the same problem, but I just didn't want that lighter color showing through in an area that I knew needed to be darker. So that's why I chose to go the medium right route first. Again, this is something you kind of learn just through practice. got to make a lot of mistakes to get to a point where you can start making decisions and stuff about how you're going to approach things. And, and even at that, I, I, you know, I don't always necessarily know how I'm going to do something until I just do it. I just, you know, the best way I can characterize it, I'm not necessarily winging it because I'm definitely, um, basing a lot of the decisions I make on my experiences that I had, the mistakes that I have made in the past on art projects. But at the same time, I'm keeping my mind open to trying new things or, you know, problems that I may not be able to predict happening. So you just got to basically go with the flow. There's also, too, as you're painting this in, an opportunity for you, if you need to, to kind of adjust the shape of your cash shadow. You can deal with the paint. Okay. So there's my base. So now what I'm going to do is I need to make now with a cast shadow, you need to 
um, add variation. So it's not going to be all one value like it is right now. If I left it like this, it just would look unfinished. Okay, and, and the shadows look really kind of um, flat and just there's not any perspective to it. But when I look at it, at the actual shadow, there's a lot of variation in it. So I need to go in and add that. Typically, your cast shadow is going to be the darkest closer to the object. And then what happens to the value of that object or the value of that cast shadow as it stretches away from the cast shadow is it gets lighter. And the other thing is too, you can also see that the edge of the cast shadow even can get a little fuzzier. Whereas the edge of the cast shadow closer to the object is really defined and sharp. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and go in. And it looks like I need to make some more. I need to really make, I need to use this really dark green that I created for my cup, for my darkest value in the cash shadow. I'm just gonna kind of paint it on top. I need to remix some of that. There we go. And I do want it to be a little bit more on the red side than on the green side, because I'm on the red paper. But again, the cash shadow is coming off of a green object, so there we go, a little bit darker. So I have this shape that's kind of um, happening right here. I'm going to block that in. So where my two cast shadows cross over, there's a really, really dark sort of shape. So I'm going to plug that in. And more likely, I'll probably go in and make it darker or, yeah, probably darker later. It actually goes up to here. I'm just going to go ahead and start giving this some variation. Let's see. So whether I'm going lighter or darker, I just need to add some variation into this cast shadow. Again, I'm looking at the cast shadow for all of those answers as to what needs to happen. So like over here where I'm working right now needs to be a little bit lighter. Just adding kind of like a little bit more of a red color for me because that's my construction paper's color on top of here to just break this up, add some variation.
Okay, so I'm going to let this cachetta dry a little bit before I go back and do anything on it. And start adding some more variation to this one. I'm just kind of um, lightening up areas of my cash shadow. Now I'm going back and I'm adding some of actually, again, the colors that I used in my cup into my cast shadow to kind of give it, again, some more variation. But also, too, the other thing, too, that uh, we talked about when we worked on our oil pastel project is reflective color. So there's going to be areas where you're going to see the color of the cup reflecting into the cast shadow and even the color of your construction paper reflecting into your cup. And so I'm going to start kind of dealing with that a little bit too. just a, again, a little bit more need some more of this over here again I'm putting some more of this green into my cast shadow just to show the reflective colors this is what's going to make the cup look like it's on it's near this color construction paper and vice versa. And then after I'm kind of done playing around with the reflective color in the cast shadow, then I'm going to um, go and do that with the cup. So add some of this red from my construction paper into the cup. All 
right, I'll come back to the I'll come back to the cachetto here in a little bit. I just want to dry it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find some areas to put some of this red in. So I'm going to use kind of like this lighter red that I made, actually. You choose whichever kind of version uh, of your construction paper color you want to. So I'm going to take a little bit of this red. Again, my construction paper is red. We don't have the construction paper painted in. I'm just going to take this, I'm going to put this where I see the red reflecting onto the cup, which there's quite a few areas actually on mine. Find those spots. Remember that color is reflective. So you're going to see these colors bouncing off of each other often, especially where they're close to each other. So down by where the cup is sitting on top of the construction paper, that's going to be a spot. I just saw it um, happening on my handle. And I'm just going to kind of take a clean brush and just blend this stuff out. kind of losing the bottom of my cup here a little bit, um, but I think I'm going to let it dry to figure out what I need to do. Also, to probably look at it in the light because uh, I might just not be seeing it well enough. Okay, so just a little bit more red on the handle. I'm seeing a lot of a lot of this construction paper color bouncing off the bottom of my handle. So I want to make sure I get that on there. And I'm just going to keep working on just finishing some things up. Find her out the shadow, trying to get some more detail in that, more variation.
Okay, so I'm going to stop there. Am I done? Absolutely not. <laughs> There's a thing, a uh, quote out there that says, uh, art is never finished, only abandoned. I mean, I could tell you, you know, prod pieces that I made five, six years ago that I still have things I want to do to it. So, you know, for me, nothing's ever finished. It can always be better. But um, I'm going to stop right now and just kind of leave this here. You guys can keep kind of working on finishing things up. And then, yeah, so that will be it.